Hey guys, I got a new project. It's a lathe. So I uh, bought this at auction uh, a couple days ago and picked it up and uh, all in it was about 2700 bucks and it looks like I might have overpaid because she's a crusty old girl. Um, got a few issues that I can see right away. Uh, looks like all the um, weight cover seals are all dead and blown out. The uh, arm here is... I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. It looks like they welded it at some point and it's got a little play in it. Um, what else? I haven't actually powered it up yet. Uh, I don't plan on powering it up because this machine is three phase and uh, I don't have three phase in my garage here. So uh, the other thing is this machine runs a control that is uh, super old. So T32B is basically the uh, uh, Mazak's version of a T32-2, which uh, is, this one in particular is like stripped down to where it can't even run G-code. Um, all of the uh, code that it runs has to be programmed on the machine, and it's all conversational. So if I do something in Fusion and design a part, I would have to come over here and program it again into the control. And then, uh, you know, besides that, uh, a lot of the hardware in here is so old that if it breaks, um, I either can't replace it or it's ungodly expensive uh, to replace it. So, you know, just for instance, uh, on this control here, somebody had to replace the CRT monitor that's in here. Uh, and those things are, you know, you can't get them anymore. So they uh, opted to replace it with an LCD screen, and from what I've seen online, these things are like $1,200 for a 14-inch, or I don't even know how big this thing is. Yeah, probably about 14 inches. Um, so $1,200 14-inch LCD screen, so you can see your monochrome 80s uh, display. Um, so just like walking around here, I've taken off a couple panels of of this crusty old thing uh, just to kind of see what's up so like you know if this power supply goes bad here uh, that part is like four hundred dollars to get a used one you know I don't even know how much some of these other things are um, the spindle drive here is like twenty five hundred dollars if it goes bad and they do go bad pretty often the access cards are like fifteen hundred dollars so just in general uh, you know, these things are, because of their age and the fact that, you know, there's not many being parted out, they're wildly expensive to just get used parts that may, you know, only last a couple more years. So my thought was, take this thing, convert it to Linux CNC, buy new drives, much cheaper drives, uh, buy a new um, spindle drive, Try to reuse as much of this wiring as possible, reuse like the relays and stuff like that, and you know, tap everything into these wires here. So, you know, to control all the relays and to control all the various functions, inputs and outputs, that sort of thing. And then the other thing I've got to do is a huge amount of cleaning. This thing is disgusting. So, this is after I vacuumed it for like half an hour. And what it is, is just a slime of like oil, uh, whey lube, probably some hydraulic oil in there, and then like dried coolant and chips and dirt. So it's a pretty nasty combination. It's on everything. It has gotten to the point to where all of the cooling fans on this machine, so this is for the spindle, this thing is like... Well, I, I busted it loose the other day just to kind of get it uh, to see how bad it was. But this thing is like basically frozen solid. Like I can't turn the blade past there. Like every cooling fan on this thing that has seen the outside air has uh, locked up totally tight. So I've got to go through the thing anyway. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and this is probably the only motor I'm going to keep is the uh, spindle motor. So it's 5.5 kilowatt continuous, so like seven, what is that, seven horsepower? And then uh, 
10, 10 horsepower intermittent. So basically I can run this thing on single phase uh, with the right inverter and uh, you know, run the drives single phase. None of this stuff from Mitsubishi can run single phase. So if you try to feed single phase into these things, uh, you'll just get, you know, a, a phase loss error or something like that. So all this stuff has to go anyway for it to be in my garage. I really don't want a phase converter because uh, they make a lot of noise. They chew up a lot of power and uh, they're just inefficient. Um, and I'll have to run a big breaker to it and everything. Plus, like, you know, that's another two grand that uh, that I don't need to spend on an old lathe. So basically my plan of action is since all this stuff supposedly works because it came from a working shop, I'm going to part it out, sell this for as much as I can, sell this for as much as I can, sell all this stuff for as much as I can, sell the screen, you know, whatever other electronics are in here. I'm going to keep the control panel itself, but, you know, all that stuff can go. Um, I'll probably get rid of this because I don't think I'll be able to interface with it, and I'm sure that these keycaps, since they're all intact, are probably worth money. Um, but I'd like to keep, you know, this stuff and this stuff. I don't really know. You know, if I'm going to need program locks and stuff like that, I'll figure it out. But basically, like, the stuff to control the chuck and cycle start and feed hold. And what I may do is add, like, a, uh, a couple potentiometers to, like, do, um, like, spindle override and then, like, feed override on this panel over here. But, yeah, basically, you know, put a, a bigger screen here. And then uh, run Linux CNC on this. So we'll do that. Um, general cleanup. I already had to clean out the chip tray here. Uh, it was so heavy with fines and stuff that was just in the bottom of the tank. I don't actually know how much fluid that would have held considering this huge bucket was full that much just from that uh, chip tray. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like they took very good care of it. They certainly didn't clean it out very often. Um, so yeah, let's walk around this side. So I already took this panel off to kind of get a lay of the land here. Um, so here's all this. We got the hydraulic pump here to operate the chuck. Uh, so that thing is three phase. I'll have to put a VFD on that as well. Um, but other than that, it looks pretty simple. Uh, spindle is just belt driven. And all this stuff is free moving. Uh, we've got the uh, encoder up there for the spindle that I can wire straight into Linux CNC. Um, all these uh, hydraulic solenoids and things are um, tied into that breaker, uh, not the breaker panel, the, uh, the relay panel in the back of the machine. So all that stuff can uh, be run by typical uh, Linux CNC hardware, probably some Mesa cards. Uh, but yeah, this thing is real nasty. Like every square inch of the inside of this thing is just disgusting. So, uh, I had to put a pig mat in there because this thing had like a pool of oil in the bottom. Um, so something is leaking in here. It's just a matter of finding it and fixing it. Uh, but yeah, so there's the other, uh, servo that I'm going to replace. And everybody seems to keep, you know, everybody on the Mazak uh, forums is, you know, they're, they're all saying, oh, keep the control, keep the control, blah, 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 the Mazatrol is so great. But the reality is, like, my workflow is Fusion 360 and then use the cam uh, to output to the Fidal over there. And that works awesome. And I really like that workflow. If I had to... Uh, you know, if I was designing a part that needed to be milled and turned, then basically the uh, the workflow would be totally disturbed by me having to come out here and program the part manually on the Mazatrol. And then, you know, what happens if, let's say, the memory gets corrupted or something happens to the machine, then I lose my program and have to program it again. You know, there's all these things. I don't know. It's It just seems like, you know, so much work. And then I'd have to buy a rotor phase converter just to get the machine uh, turned on. So, not to mention, if something does break, let's say the spindle drive 
dies one day, then I'm out 2,500 bucks on my $2,500 machine. So, um, so yeah, just it just makes sense to me to you know recoup the money that I spent on this thing by selling most of the components uh, that I will replace by much cheaper, uh, more reliable components. Um, I mean, you can get like DYN4, uh, DMM is the company, and DYN4 servos, like a set for this machine to actually upgrade this machine to like a 1.3 and a one kilowatt servo is like 1100 bucks or some something crazy like that. So, uh, so yeah, just the, the price of that to replace the, you know, the old servos in here and, you know, the new servers, servos are going to be better quality and, you know, better encoders on them, whatnot. It just makes sense to go ahead and just part this machine out of all the stuff that I don't want as a liability and then put a bunch of new stuff in and improve the, uh, the manufacturing workflow for me. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, probably take some videos of me trying to clean this goop up. I think what I'm going to try to do is get a pump sprayer with some, uh, purple power and water in it and kind of mist it over everything. And then, uh, once I get most of the dried cooling up, I'm going to go after the oil probably with like an engine degreaser or something. Uh, to kind of break that stuff up because I don't really want to be working in here swapping things out getting You know metal shavings and splinters and oil all over me if I am gonna clean it up eventually, so the other thing that I need to work on is uh, the uh, lube system and the uh, the linear rails um, It looks from what I can see it's kind of hard to tell because I haven't broken this machine apart enough but it looks like things like the, the the seals on the trucks and everything are like swollen and probably soft from the the dried coolant crap on them um a lot of this uh stuff that goes on in a cnc machine tends to like swell up and make uh rubber kind of gross so depending on what they're made out of which i don't know like all this stuff is like soft to the touch like can put my thumbnail through it and then you know all these like window rubber surrounds are just squishy and you know they shouldn't be able to do that so i have to go through and replace a bunch of stuff and uh do some painting and clean up and rust removal and lots more cleaning and stuff um but you know this came from a supposedly working shop so i'm hoping that like a lot of this stuff oil oil pump and uh, you know all the hydraulics for the chuck and everything, and the uh, the spindle or the the uh, tailstock and everything still work. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be working on, and uh, hopefully I can get some videos of me uh, taking care of this thing, and hopefully get it uh, working as nice as the fiddle over there.